Here we're going to talk about inverses of functions, but we're going to focus on this graphically. Later on, we'll look at a lesson for how to find an inverse symbolically. If we have a function, uh, we're going to look at what is the domain and range of the function, and if it has an inverse. A function is defined on domain D, um, and it is one-to-one -one if each value of f of x corresponds to exactly one value of x in the domain. One-to-one uh, one -one functions pass that horizontal line test that we've talked about. So every y value is coming from exactly one x value. If we look at the definition of an inverse function, that means that the function is one to one on a domain of x with a range of y, then that function will have a unique inverse. We write that inverse in this notation. Uh, it's a little small to write, so it looks like f with a negative one exponent but it's just read as f inverse of x. So there's our inverse notation. In an input-output situation, what we saw was that the domain inputs come into the function and it maps to a specific value in the range. And so there's our output. What an inverse function will do will take that back from the outputs and map it back to the original input. So it's just working backwards um, and taking what was in the range back to the domain. So graphically what that looks like, we have a function and it's on a specific domain of negative two to seven. It has a range of zero to three. What we're gonna do is look at each point that has been graphed already. Now this is an infinite collection of points, but we're gonna look at the specific points that are already labeled for us. So if I have a table, x and f of x would be listed as, this is negative two, zero. And we have another one here at negative one, positive one. There's not a point labeled for zero, so let's skip that one, but we see the next nice point is at two, two. And then all the way over here, we have another point three, um, but that is an X value of seven, so seven, three. What we'll notice is we said we went from negative two to seven on the domain, and we did go from negative two to seven. The range was zero to three, zero to three is our range. The inverse of the function maps it backwards. So it's a swap of the x and y value. So think about what was over here. We had a negative two, try to make it dark enough that you can read it, negative two mapped to zero. What an inverse function is gonna do is take that zero and map it back to negative two. So all that happened was zero went back all the way to negative two. Negative one mapped to one, so now the inverse maps that one back to negative one. Two mapped to two, so two maps back to two. And then seven mapped to three, so three maps back to seven. All that happens is a swap of the inverse, or sorry, the x and y values. So the inverse function is just an, a swap. Now we're gonna graph what that looks like so if I map or graph 0, negative 2, that new point, 0, negative 2 is down here. And then we have 1, negative 1. So let's go to 1, negative 1, 2, 2. Well, 2, 2 is that same point, but we can just draw a point on top of it. 3, 7, 3, 6, 7. It goes all the way up here. And that's all we have to map, but when we kind of connect the dots and draw this graph here, try to draw it, it looks something like this. It's not perfect, but 
what we'll hopefully notice is something that kind of looks like a mirror image of that original function, and it is. It's a reflection of the function. So it's helpful to start with these tables, and if it's not made for you, you can create one just off the graph to give you the new points. But what we can kind of gather from this is that f of x and f inverse of x are reflections. So they are reflections over the line y equals x. Now, if you remember what that line looks like, y equals x is just a diagonal line with a slope of 1 going through that origin. So it looks like this. That hopefully gives you a better visual of that reflection, but it does just kind of fold over that line, and that x and y value you can see have just been swapped. So when we look at the x and y values, that means that the domain and the range, the domain and range have swapped. And that's just because the x and y values are the inputs and outputs. Outputs swap. Example two here, we've already gotten a table made for us. So it says we want to graph the inverse and determine the domain and range. Notice in this graph, we have a point here that is open. All right, it is technically not defined. So when we look at 2, 1.5, that's an open circle. This is, you know, not technically defined. So we'll need to make sure that's notated in our inverse graph. So if we made S, X, and F inverse table, this would be negative 3, negative 1, negative 2.5, and 0. 0, 1.5, and then 1.5, 2. Remember that will be an open circle. So let's just graph those real quick. So negative 3, negative 1. So let's go to negative 3, and then negative 1. Put our closed dot. Negative 2.5, 0. Negative 2.5 is right there, so 0. And then 0, 1.5, well that's 1, maybe just count by 0.5s, so that makes that 1.5. 1.52. So if I go to 1.5 and, and then up to 2, that's going to be our open circle. And then we can connect the dots and show what the graph kind of looks like. Again, if I want to draw in that diagonal line, y equals x. You can see that reflection. So we've graphed it. There's our new inverse. And we can write out that's in f inverse of x. But we want to actually define what are the domain and range. So domain... Actually, let's move that down a little bit, and I'll kind of show you an easy way to um, organize this a little bit. Domain, range. Oftentimes, what we're going to be asked to do is not only write this for f, but also for f inverse. And f was already shown for us. So f was negative 1 to 2, and the range was negative 3 to 1.5 what the inverse did was swap that. So now the range became the domain of F inverse. And the domain became the range of F inverse. So go ahead and try these last two examples here on the second page. And then you can check the video at the um, next to kind of see if you're understanding this.
So if you tried those two examples, what you'll see is that reflection gave us this F inverse. The domain and range have swapped. So what was from negative two to two and one to three has swapped to be one to three for the domain of F inverse, negative two to two for the range of F inverse. The second example, we have that exponential function. All right, remember it keeps going on forever because it didn't have any stopping points for us. But the inverse function, when we flipped it, this became a point at one zero, a point at two one, and this point was one half negative one. So as we graphed that, what you notice hopefully was the asymptote that was at zero is now a vertical asymptote at zero. And so that affects the domain range because originally the domain was negative infinity to positive infinity. The range was zero to infinity because if we look at the y values, it's never hitting zero, but it went all the way up. So that b became the new domain. It's never gonna hit an X value of zero, but it does go zero to infinity. And then the range would hit all of the Y values from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity.